Welcome to Movie Film. I'm Carl, and continuing our journey looking for a WWE film starring a WWE superstar, which is at least decent. Today, we're taking a look at Armed Response, a movie starring Wesley Snipes and WWE superstar Seth Rollins. This film was made in just 2017. It's only a few years ago, so it should be pretty good, right? It's one of the most recent WWE films starring a WWE superstar that we've featured on this show. And as I've said previously on previous episodes, I go into all these movies completely unbiased. I'm not expecting them to be Citizen Kane's, but I'm hoping they're not going to be terrible. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt going in and hoping for the best. And this movie, this movie, this might be the one. Not the good movie starring a WWE superstar, this might actually be the worst movie I've ever seen. It's horrendously bad. Hilariously bad at points. This is supposed to be a horror thriller movie. A horror thriller movie starring Wesley Snipes. That's gone pretty well in the past. So, throw WWE's movie behind it, put in one of their biggest stars, because Seth Rollins in 2017 and ever since has been one of WWE's biggest superstars. So putting one of their biggest superstars in, put someone like Wesley Snipes in, in the genre he's known for, and putting WWE money behind it, recipe for success, surely. Well, what we got in the end was a horror movie, which isn't scary. There's no scares at all in it. There's some pathetic attempts at scares, some pathetic special effects, there's some ridiculous special effects that even WWE in their live shows every week can do better than this movie does with its, you know, whole post-production and whatever special effects studio they had. It seems like their special effects studio was done by a 14-year-old who just learned how to use, you know, Cinema 4D or something like that in their bedroom last week. So the movie, the overall story, let's try to get through some of this. So the story is based around this facility, this government facility, which I shit you not, holds a special lie detector. Like the world's most magical lie detector that can't be beaten. It can see your thoughts through your sweat for some reason. It can like see your DNA. It knows your memories. Someone thought that was a good idea. <sighs> but this facility, something's gone wrong. It always does. In the facility, the security guards or the team that had been working there, they've all disappeared. So a new team is sent in. Wesley Snipes' team is sent in and he's gone off and he's got Gabriel, who's like the guy who built the facility or came up with the plans for the facility, something like that. Seth Rollins is one of Wesley Snipes' guys. He plays the tough guy, the guy who's like always against the rest of them and just wants to beat up everybody. So these new team go into the facility looking to find out what happened. And when they go in, they find dead bodies everywhere. They find out that this previous team have all been killed somehow. Now they have to figure out how. While they're there, in just randomly, they come across a sentry deprivation tank and inside there's someone alive. And he just happens to be one of the most wanted criminals in America and in the Middle East. Now, I should state that a lot of the team are former soldiers. Eventually, they find out that it's actually the facility that's killing people. Da, da, da. So they see these tapes of one by one, the former people that were there being killed. Now half of them are killed by each other accidentally. One guy's walking upstairs, he hears a noise and he shoots towards a vent and just how it happens that one of his co-workers was in the vent and he ends up killing her in the vent unbeknownst to him. And then he's running outside, looks like something's chasing him, so he just shoots himself in the head. There's another guy and we just see him walk into a kitchen and then we hear some bang and him screaming and then they find him in an oven half cooked and there's various attempts at jump scares and there, there's no jump scares there's no real scare parts in it the horror part is very tame at best but then the big reveal comes later on that the army guys the former soldiers that were actually working with the most wanted criminal when they were in Afghanistan they killed a lot of innocent people and Gabriel the only guy who wasn't a soldier I guess fights back and he wants to save people or I don't know what his motivation was for trying to run away I guess trying to stay alive and one of the girls who was with the soldiers turns on her friends and helps Gabriel and we end up at a point where 
Seth Rollins is fighting the girl who's trying to help Gabriel, and he's walking down the hall, he's about to shoot her, and the facility, the, the wall of the facility reaches out and grabs his gun and shoots him with his own gun. A wall, an arm comes out of a wall, just straight, stretches out, very poor CGI or whatever they did, and it just looks horrendous. And then later on, the most wanted criminal guy, he's walking down a hall, and both walls reach out and grab his arms. Two hands are wrapped around both arms, and they just pull his arms off, and he drops to his knees dead. And then Wesley Snipes and Gabriel, the protagonist guy, they're fighting, and they end up where Gabriel's in like a control center, and Wesley Snipes is on the outside, and Wesley Snipes delivers the line, whatever you're thinking of doing, don't do it. So you can see the writing in this movie, <sighs> sensational. And then Wesley Snipes ends up dying, and then the girl comes along to help Gabriel, and Gabriel's outside and Gabriel dies. And then the girl's left there, the woman is left there at the end, the lone survivor, and she just gets up and walks out of the facility, you know, leaves like 11 dead people behind, walks out of the facility, and the movie ends. Which leaves it the question of, like, would she not call in all the dead bodies, you know, try f prove that she isn't the one that killed them? Because if I'm a cop and I come along and I see all these dead bodies, and I see on a security camera this woman walking away, I go, she did it, she did it, she definitely did it. What's she gonna say? Oh, th no, the walls. It was the walls. The fella reached out of the wall and he killed her. The story was poor. The writing was abysmal. I didn't even notice the music in the movie. Normally I notice when the music's really shit, but I guess it was just middle of the road. It wasn't good for a horror movie. The acting, I don't think you can blame the actors for this one. They're just giving a shit script. And I assume Seth Rollins was told he had to be in it by Dr. Louis, because if he chose to be in it, then he just has bad judgment. They must have paid Wesley Snipes like $400 billion to be in this movie. You know, I know he hasn't had the best reputation since Blade, but he can do better than this. Armed response. If you told me it was made by children, I'd believe you. That's how bad the movie is. And I know no one's expecting it to be spectacular, but when WWE are putting one of their top guys in the movie, and they're investing time to get someone like Wesley Snipes in it, and WWE have a hell of a lot of money to put into a movie like this, this movie could have been something if they tried. I think they just banked on them having a built-in audience of WWE fans and Seth Rollins fans who watched this movie because it was made by the WWE. And that's really shitty from WWE to try to just cash in on someone like that. But now we're four movies in. I watched four separate WWE movies starring WWE superstars, five into Jingle All The Way 2 and I'm yet to find a good one. But maybe you guys know. Maybe someone out there knows of a good WWE film starring a WWE superstar that isn't fighting with my family because I'm not counting that one. A good one that I can review on a show because I'm looking for a good one. I'm not genuinely looking to give out about WWE movies. It's just I'm getting more and more annoyed by each one because of how poor they are. If this movie was made 11 years or 12 years after the Marine and the Marine is better than Armed Response even though the Marine was terrible. There's so many filmmakers out there who are just desperate for the chance. So many independent filmmakers who are desperate to be given the type of opportunity to make a movie on a budget like WWE could. And they're just pissing money up the wall instead. It's so annoying to see. So guys, if you've seen Armed Response, let me know just what you thought of it. Maybe you thought it was the best movie of all time. If you did, you need to get your head checked, but let me know regardless. And of course, if you liked today's video, please hit that like button just so that I know what you're watching. And if you're new to my film, please hit that subscribe button for new content every Wednesday and Friday. And with all that out of the way, thank you so much for watching.